Hello and welcome to another filament testing video. Jumpcast saw my review video about Creality's K1 and they asked me if I want to test their filaments designed for high speed printing. Well, I said yes, so they sent me a high speed PLA Plus, but also I got a spool of their PETG filament. Now, always I like for us to check the specifications on the manufacturer's website. They're presented on Amazon, eBay and similar. And I can see that uh, we have different informations on the website, different on Amazon and different on the spool, actually on the sticker on the box. So I would suggest them to first synchronize this uh, data. Anyway, according to the website, the printing temperature is between 200 and 230 degrees Celsius. Interesting, on the bed temperature, according to the website, 75 and 90 degrees Celsius. I believe that this is too much for the, even for PLA Plus. Anyway, uh, printing speed between 50 and 600 millimeters per second. Later below it says 500 millimeters per second. Not big difference here, but um, I think it would be very useful to give us the maximum flow rate too about the PETG filament. According to the website, the print temperature between 220 and 250 degrees Celsius. Now the printing speed between 30 and 60 millimeters per second. So this is not really high speed printing. Anyway, for PETG, always we have to reduce the speed, but I believe that I can print this, I should print this uh, on higher speed, not only 60 millimeters per second. Anyway, on the bed temperature, between 75 and 90 degrees Celsius. This is close to real values, which I usually use for the PETG filaments. A little bit lower on the website, it has functional material, but it would be good to have some more functional parts on those pictures next to this text. For PLA Plus, I will use this original smooth PI sheet from the Creality, but for PETG, I will use this uh, textured one. I bought it separately because be careful, PETG may stick too good to PI surface. Uh, if you have only the smooth one, then use some glue as a separation layer. Me personally, I like this kind of videos because uh, from the same manufacturer, we have two different types of the filaments, and then we can have some direct comparison between these two materials. The printing I'm starting with PLA Plus, nice vacuum packaging with some desiccant inside. It would be good to have some uh, information about the print temperatures or bed temperature on the spool. It would be good to have some kind of scale here to see how much filament we have on the spool, approximately at least. And I'm still missing also the weight of the empty spool. If the net weight of the spool is really 1 kg, then the weight of the empty spool is 167 grams. The temperature tower I prepared in the Creality print. Interesting, it is very similar to one on the Thingiverse by Gazzoli, and I couldn't see any reference here by the Creality. Anyway, the filament change was uh, without any problems. This is the last element of the temperature tower on 210 degrees Celsius. The bed adhesion is good thanks to the glue stick. And just a very minimal stringy, otherwise this could be a perfect temperature tower. Now I can see some ghosting, probably I should ruin an input shaping on the K1 but uh, otherwise that's not the issue of the filament and i decided to print all test objects at once actually one is missing here i will add it later and this is the real time speed so you can imagine how fast is this printing i think it was set to 300 millimeters per second by default i use here the hyper pla settings from the slicer these are the last two elements for the layer adhesion test printed vertically This is a test object I forgot from previous printing for the torque or twist test. And to keep similar speeds, I'm printing here the D12 dies too. And now printing with PETG. It is also on the cardboard spool with nice vacuum packaging. Here additionally we have some sticker with the print temperature and color, but it would be good to see, I know, scale on these holes or the weight of the empty spool and similar. Also on their website we have a warning that uh, the PETG must be dry and because it absorbs moisture from the air. I will try to print as it is now out of the box. So this packaging looks quite good, but on the website we have the information that the drying temperature should be between 65 and 70 degrees Celsius. Use. Uh, probably four or five hours should be enough for this, but as I mentioned, I will try to print as it is out of the box. The filament change was successful. And also I'm placing here the textured PI sheet, cleaning with some isopropyl alcohol. And this is the Creality print and I'm preparing the temperature tower. The printing was uh, smooth without any problems. 
and the vegetation is great actually until it's hot and when it cools down it is very easy to remove it and actually this temperature tower looks maybe even better than the previous one from uh, PLA and this is Creality Print again here you can see the difference from the generic PETG settings I change a little bit the speed, the temperatures and also the part cooling fan and I print all test objects at once and this is real time speed footage Approximately 200 mm per second is the maximum here. Last two objects for the layered cajun test. And until the bed is hot, it sticks very good. And if it cools down, it is very easy. With minimal flexing, I can remove all test objects. And I can start with mechanical testing. These test objects are printed in horizontal position for the tensile or pulling test. No big difference between these two materials in this test. A little bit strange break on the PETG parts. But let's move to the layer adhesion test. So these test objects are printed in vertical position. And in both cases I have great layer adhesion here. For PTG this is very impressive, 54-55 kilograms on these test objects. Two-sided shear stress and in both cases very strong materials. Shared correctly, only one part is missing here. And now my three-point bending test. Here you can see all load placed, but I will place it one by one. And also I measure the deformation after 1, 30 and 60 seconds. You can see them here side by side. This is speed up footage 25 times. And after this test I cannot see any permanent deformation on these test objects. They are visually completely straight. The torque or twist test and here I am measuring the torque, uh, the load at 90 degree angle and the maximal torque. And PLA is a little bit stronger in this case, but I wouldn't say the difference is too big. For me it is more important that uh, load at 90 degree angle. Now the creep test, the deformation under the constant load, which will be 1.25 kilograms. And I have to improvise here some test equipment because my original one is used. I have here six test objects because I always have several experiments in the progress. Placing the load. Position fix for more accurate measuring. 15.99. Much bigger initial deformation on part from PETG and I will measure them uh, every day next five days and uh, the numbers you will see in the results part. Interesting after one day the deformation is almost equal so usually on this room temperature PLA doesn't deform in this test but here it is very similar to the PETG. This is the last fifth day and even with the bare eyes I can see more deformation on the PLA plus part compared to the PETG. And now let's remove the load. After approximately five minutes more permanent deformation on part from PLA plus compared to the PETG. The ISO impact test with this half kilogram hammer and these notch test objects and uh, we will see which material is more brittle. PLA. Zero position, PTG. The brake is very similar, but let's analyze the pictures. This is the zero position of the hammer, and this is the position after breaking PLA and PTG parts, and this means that the, the PTG is more brittle material compared to the PLA plus, and if I measure everything from the zero position, I can calculate the braking energy. The temperature test where I want to record the temperature of the first deformation and I will follow the temperature with this cooking thermometer. And then no surprises here for the start of the deformation. The PLA started around 53 degrees Celsius and the PTG around 70 degrees Celsius. But then actually the PLA stopped with the deforming. So actually in this test almost it performed better than the PTG. 
Of course, the very important is the start temperature, start of the deformation. And after one minute, the PETG is still very soft, uh, but uh, PLA plus is quite hard. And now the friction test, which actually became a regular testing method with uh, flexible filaments. And I got several questions how it performs compared to the PLA or PETG. Well, let's find out. So these legs are printed here and the total weight will be together with this plate 3.5 kilograms. And now we measure the pulling force and only the static coefficient of friction. Usually with soft TPU filaments I have a pulling force in kilograms of approximately 1.2 kilograms and let's see what's the case with the PLA 0 0.29 0 0.30 0 0.35 0 0.40 Switching the legs to the PETG. Zero point twenty four, zero point twenty three, zero point twenty four. Little bit off topic, I have here Polymaker's TPU filaments and uh, I want to extend that data for my Patreon supporters. Off camera, here you can see the values, I will show you only one pooling. So this one has a hardness of 95A on shore scale. 095, 095, 098. As I mentioned, this data goes to that summary table for my Patreon supporters because it was missing. And uh, if you want to find out more about this friction test, you can check my extruded TPU filament testing. And why on the glass I got this question too? Because I have most uh, constant results on this surface. I tried on the floor, I tried on the desk, but that surface is not completely smooth. And on glass I have more constant results and with this uh, the results are more comparable with each other. And let's analyze the results in this Excel table and uh, you can download it from mytechfund.com website. And I will start with the creep test. So this is the measured value, but what we need is difference between two days. And that's what can we actually see here on this graph. And here the PETG was better compared to the PLA. Even on the fifth day, I can measure more than one millimeter of creeping on the PLA plus test object. But uh, this would be normal if the temperature would be 35, 40 degrees Celsius. But in that room, the temperature was uh, 20 degrees Celsius only. On the tensile test, no big difference between two materials. Now the layer adhesion test, where I was very impressed with both materials, especially with PETG. More than 54 kilograms brake load, that was really impressive for this material. Actually, because of the, this, I have some project for this uh, PETG filament. The shear stress both perform quite good, no big difference between these two. And then the three-point bending test, and this is the deformation under this load after 30 seconds, but maybe more important is uh, this table, where I can see the deformation after 1, 30 and 60 seconds under this load. And uh, what can we see here, that uh, smaller values are better, so PLA plus perform better compared to the PETG, but I'm not really happy that this is not completely horizontal, so again I can see that creeping of these two materials on high load of course. The torque or twist test and actually for me more important is I think this load at 90 degree angle and here well the PLA plus was uh, better but I wouldn't say this is significant difference. And now the ISO impact test and uh, PTG is more brittle material compared to PLA plus and here you can see the average values for average PLA and PTG from my summary table. And then the temperature test. Interesting, the start deformation was, as I predicted, approximately 53-70 degrees Celsius for these two materials. But after that, uh, the PLA plus stopped with the forming and at the end it was uh, even harder compared to the PETG. The friction test, this is just uh, for answering the question how it performs compared to the TPU filaments. And also very important specifications for this filament is the price. Both are quite cheap, but $12 for PTG, which is actually good PTG, that was very impressive. And now some conclusions for the end, and now we start with this PLA+. Plus. The printability is great, even on this higher speed, on K1, I had zero problems with it. From mechanical properties, the only weakest point I could find is that creep test, this means it doesn't like too big constant load on it, even on the room temperature, 20 degrees Celsius. About the PETG, I already mentioned that I was really impressed with the layer adhesion, as you can see I used almost the whole spool. I printed this AMS riser for the bamboo lab, 
and definitely it can be printed on higher speeds, not only 60 millimeters per second given in the specifications. Uh, I went right, this was printed on 300 millimeters per second speed and actually the only issue I had, but this may be the problem of the printer is, are these overhangs on the back side. On the front side all those overhangs came out perfectly, on the back side it required a little bit more cooling so probably reducing the speed would fix this problem, but so 300 mm per second was a little bit too fast, on 200 mm per second zero issues with it. This was my experience with uh, these filaments, the price is really impressive, I'm not sure how permanent is this price, but $12 for the PTG filament 1 kg spool, this is great. If you have some additional comments, you know, write me a few lines down. Thank you for watching and happy printing!